the number one. Uh, we can see here that a circuit in which all charges follow a single pathway, that would be series. When I have one pathway, it's series. When I have multiple pathways and more options, it is parallel. For a parallel circuit, and sometimes this throws people off, as the number of resistors being used um, increases, so basically as I add resistors in parallel, uh, most people struggle to understand that the overall resistance decreases, and therefore the current increases. And a real simple way to kind of visualize this is imagine you're standing on a checkout lane at the supermarket and it's all backed up so there's maybe 30 people behind you and they only have one register open. Some employee runs over, says, you know, I can take the next customer on lane two and then three, four, five, they start to open more of these lanes parallel to one another, meaning they're giving customers more options. And hopefully you realize that as soon as you give these customers more options, you can get people through the store significantly faster. Yes, you're adding registers in this case, or you're adding resistors, but each person only has to go through one. So you're actually really adding options. When you add more options, you can fit more people through the same area in a shorter amount of time, so faster. Uh, we'll go over it in more detail, but in a parallel, as you add more things in parallel, you're giving new pathways, you're giving new options, therefore you're decreasing the resistance, you're making it easier for people to get through, and therefore you can get more people through or more electrons through, and therefore the current increases. For number three, it's uh, fairly simple. Uh, most household circuits, almost all of them are connected in parallel. Well, the reason why they do this and the only one that really makes sense is that turning off one appliance doesn't shut down everything else. If everything in your house was wired in series, then as soon as you shut off anything, a light bulb, the television, uh, everything in the house will go out. So the fridge would, be, uh, would go out, all your food would be spoiled. Uh, you couldn't turn on lights anywhere else in your house. This is why we wire houses in parallel. pretty good way to understand current is to look at literally the current and water flow. Uh, so here I have a series of pipes. I have 100 gallons per minute. That's what GPM stands for. Every minute that goes by, 100 gallons pumps past this meter. Now when that water hits here, it can branch off in two directions. We're told that 40 gallons per minute of the 100 go this way, which means this would have to be 60 because the 100 has to split into 40 and 60. Any other number and suddenly I either gain gallons or I lost gallons. Now the 60 then has another option where it can now split. We're told that 20 of the 60 goes this way. That would make the remaining 40 travel this way. Now I had 100 gallons come in. I better have 100 go out. If we take a look at the three tunnels or the three pipes that connect back together, I get 40 from this, 40 from this, so those combine to give me 80, and the other 20 comes back in and leaves with 100. If I look at this case over here, I cannot start from the beginning. I have 100 gallons per minute come in. Uh, we're given that 25 of that 100 goes here, but we're given two unknowns, two blanks. So we actually don't have enough information to solve these. I found these by actually going down at the end and working backward. This 100 gallons per minute is a com combination of this 60 and whatever passes through this pipe. So these two pipes converge to give me the 100. Well, the 60 must have combined with a 40 to give me the 100. Then I can continue to work backwards. The 40 from this pipe came from the 25 here and the unknown amount here, which tells me this must be 15 because it shows that these two must combine to give me 40. Once I know this is 15, I can then say, well, 100 came in, 25 went here, 15 went here. That combines to give me 40. That means 40 went in this direction to fill these pipes. The remaining 60 must have gone here. Well, I run into another problem down here because, yes, of the 60, 40 goes here, but these are two unknowns. But I do recognize that this is 50, meaning the 40 must combine with something here to give me 50. That can only be 10. Once I know that this is 50 and this point here is 60, well, the 50 plus whatever came from here combined to give me 60. So that has to be 10 as well. <clears throat> for number five, it's very similar to number four, but instead of dealing with water, we're dealing with the actual current in the circuit. I know I have 12 amps of total current that will travel through here, meaning even though it splits among these three pipes, just like it might split among multiple pipes, I know the total has to be 12. I have 12 going in, I have 12 going out, I must have 12 in here. If I have six and two in these two legs, that gives me eight. The other four must have gone in the top leg. Similarly, in the second circuit, if I have six total amps, I have two in this leg, two in this leg, I must have two in the last because that is the only way to get the six amps. 
for number six. We're going to have to apply a little bit of math here. I've tried to draw that in as best I could. I'm just using the kind of uh, idea from number five. I know I have 12 total amps of current. I've got five, I'm sorry, I have five, four, that gives me nine. The last three must have gone up here. The most current will choose the least resistive path. Therefore, since A has the most current, it must be the least resistive. B is in the middle, so it must have the middle resistance. And the fewest amount of current chose this option, option A. Um, I apologize. Uh, this should be flipped around. C should be your least resistive because you have the most current. B should have the middle and A. So this should actually say C, B, A because the most current will go through the least resistive option. So I apologize, this should be C, B, A. Um, I probably didn't recognize that these were the letters. I was probably looking at A over here. Uh, so let's double check and see if this is right. Um, so what we have here is we have six total amps of current. We've got three and one, which is four. That gives me two here. The most current is traveling through B, so B should be the least resistive, the lowest resistance. A should be in the middle, and then C should be the most resistive because I have the least amount of current. So this again should say B, A, C. If we take a look at number seven, this one can be a little bit confusing, but we're told that we have three resistors in parallel. That means one by one. So kind of like this, but with a third one here. We know that the current through the three ohm resistor is six amps or six amperes. Well, the voltage drop must then be, where did I come up with 18? Ohm's law. If I know the current is 6 and the resistance is 3, multiplying I and R will give me the voltage of 18. That provides sufficient evidence, meaning if this is a parallel circuit, the voltage is all the same across every resistor. So that means that the, uh, what is it, the next one? The 6 ohm has 18 volts and the 9 ohm has 18 volts. Once I know that, I've got the voltage and the resistances for each, and I can find out the rest of the information. The way I did that, <clears throat> it's essentially to look at this. I know the voltage is 18 for each. I know the resistances of each. Therefore, it's not too much of a leap to just sit there and calculate um, the actual current in each. So 18 divided by 6 is 3. 18 divided by 9 is 2.